All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so uh, this morning I'm going to sort of run through um, the resurrection with you. And I want to do it in contrast to the idea that there will be two sets of a resurrection of believers. Okay, because... Uh, most everybody is teaching this idea that there will be the first resurrection when Jesus comes. And then a thousand years later there will be another resurrection. Alright, so I'm going to dispel that. I'm going to disprove it. And I'm going to try to make it real easy and simple for you to see that that is not a possibility. According to the Word of God. According to the Bible, it's not possible. And let me see if I can do this real simple. All right, so let me open up this here in Revelation 20. Of course, we read that uh, it says that the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, let's go to... Oh, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. Just follow me on this. I know you know the verses. But I want you to follow the, this line of thought with me. Alright. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Notice, this is not just uh, some people are going to get uh, resurrected, right? Notice, it's the dead in Christ, meaning all of us that have died, will rise Right? All. All the those who have died will rise, and all of us who are still alive will also rise and meet, and everybody will meet in the air. Alright, there is no wiggle room for, well, only some people will be resurrected. No, this is all people. Alright. You get what I'm saying here, right? It's not a partial resurrection. Once you establish that fact in your mind, once you realize that, you no longer have any wiggle room for an, an additional resurrection a thousand years. And let me show you, okay? But at first we have to establish this fact. That everybody that has ever been saved will be resurrected when the Lord comes. All right, that has to be established first. And of course, we read in Daniel 12, consider this now. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So, the saved will be woken up or resurrected when the Lord comes as well as the unsaved at the same time okay so those of us that are saved are lifted up we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we are lifted up the unsaved are awoke and s gathered at our feet All right, now let's take a look at. Uh, yeah, I gotta do it this way. 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 Okay. In Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 
in Matthew 22 and in Luke 20. Matthew 22 and Luke 20. Jesus says, In the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Luke 20. But they which shall be counted worthy, <coughs> excuse me, worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. All right, so now we've established the fact that in the resurrection, after the end of the world, after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, there is no more marriages. Okay? That's an absolute fact. So when we are resurrected, we will not be rejoined with our wife or our, you know, your husband. All right, there will not be, uh, hey, baby, what's going on in the life to come hereafter? All right? It's going to be much better than that. Much, much better. All right? You won't have to worry about me coming up to you and saying, hey, baby, what's going on? Right? You won't have to worry about that because there is no getting, hooking up, if you will. All right, because there's no marriage. You know what that means? I'll give you a second to think about it. Because people ain't going to be hooking up. It's going to be much better than that. All right, it's going to be much better than that. Uh, now, consider this. <clears throat> love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. But it is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, we've established that there is no more marriages in the life to come hereafter. Neither is there any more lust. So once you remove lust and once you remove marriages, you have to concede the fact that there will not be children born after the resurrection. All right. Now we're getting someplace. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, if you understand that, by golly, you got it. Okay. Okay. I mean, surely, you can see that there is only one resurrection. All right, we've established that all the saved will be resurrected when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Everybody. There's not a partial resurrection. Everybody that is saved will be resurrected. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and then after that, there is no more children being born. Right? There is no more children being born. Therefore, there is no more, well, I didn't get saved until after Jesus came. Right? That That's not... It's not possible, right? Because when Jesus comes afterward, there is no more marriages. There is no more lusting. Therefore, there is no more children being born. Because there is no more children being born, there are no more resurrections. The resurrection is at the end of the world. Therefore... The rest of the dead that live not again until the thousand years are finished, this has to be 
at the end of the world. Has to be. There is no wiggle room. If you say, well, there's another resurrection after the thousand years, if there was one before, then there's one after. Where? What people? All the dead have already risen from the graves. The judgment of God has already been executed. There, there hasn't been any children being born after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There are no more children. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. There is no more marriages, no more lust, therefore no more children. So who get, who's going to get resurrected if everybody gets resurrected before the thousand years? There ain't nobody to resurrect. See? Do you see it yet? Is there anybody out there? Therefore, the th this has to be talking about the end of the world is at the end of the thousand years. And the first resurrection has to be the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your only option. That's the only thing that it can be. So, does Jesus say anything about the first resurrection? Hmm. Well, let, let me think about that for a second here. I think he said something to the effect. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. He flat out says it. I'm the resurrection. Well, who's the first resurrection, though? Well, it's Jesus. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You can't figure that out. First John, I'm sorry. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Consider this. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. I started too late there. Late to the show. Hold on a second. Oh, goodness there's so much good stuff here it's incredible for if the dead rise not then is not Christ raised and if Christ be not raised your faith is in vain ye are yet in your sins then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, and afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So when he comes, then we are resurrected. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are resurrected. And those, there's nobody, there's not a partial resurrection. It's the end of the world. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that should be destroyed is death. This goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15, when the Lord said unto the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy feet, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Lord is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying 
all evil forever. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Okay. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son of Man himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. All right, so, I and mean, this is fantastic stuff. So, there is no possibility of another resurrection because there are no children to be born after the resurrection right makes sense and again Jesus is the resurrection he is the first fruits of them that slept where are we at I am the resurrection right he is the first fruits of them that slept and then, just in case it wasn't enough, just in case, we read here in Revelation 1. Boy, could have, could have figured this out already, but that's okay. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. The first begotten of the dead. That's... He's the first resurrection. You should have known that. You should have figured that out. He's the first begotten of the dead. He is the first resurrection. And we are partakers of his resurrection. He has led the way for us. He has done all the works of God. He has laid down his life and took it back up and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. All right, so he is our shepherd. We are the sheep, and we follow him. He's led the way for us. So we should, we should die, and then he will return, and we will be lifted up from the grave. We will be transformed into our glorified body and lifted up into the air to meet the Lord, our shepherd, in the air. All right. Make sense? So he is the resurrection, and we are just following him. We're not the resurrection. You're not the first resurrection. He is. You should have known that. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Consider John chapter 11 verses 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of God right now right now we are kings and priests unto God right now we are a royal priesthood right now even in Revelation 1 you could have figured this out right and verse 6 has made us kings and priests unto God right now you should have known that kings and priests right now we are priests of God right now we are called to preach the gospel to every creature we are priests of God right now and I saw thrones we are the kings he has made us kings has made us kings kings sit on thrones and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them the saved the judgment has already been given to us. Right? Whoever, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The judgment of God, of eternal life, the judgment, the decision that we shall have eternal life, 
has already been made for us when God chooses us, when we are born of the Spirit of God. We shall never die. We are kings and priests unto God right now. He has made us kings and priests. The judgment has already been given to us right now. Right now. If the judgment hasn't been already given to you, then you can't say that you're safe. God hasn't decided yet. God has not laid down that, de that decision yet. Is what you're saying. It, it, are you saying you're not sitting on thrones, heavenly thrones right now? Then you can't say that you're saved. Right, you know, you can't. You got, you got no right to say that you're saved. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Right? In which we wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus to the intent now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Uh, highly recommend reading the book of Ephesians. But we can draw parallels, certainly, with these heavenly places, we being kings and priests and a God, and then, of course, um, the thrones, and we that sit on them in heavenly places right now the fact that the judgment of God has already been given to us that are born of God there is no an additional judgment for us we have eternal life that'll never change no matter what and I, if you don't like it you're stuck Chuck you know once you're saved that's it sorry buddy you can't get out you're trapped there is no escape. Alright, have a good day.